All right, hey guys. So um, this is, as you can see in upside down lettering, my cosmic ray detector. Now I've taped it up with electrical tape, so not as much light leaks in, but um, I'll show you some pictures of what that looked like here. It's a, a, a rectangular uh, scintillator block of uh, BC408, I believe, and a, a photomultiplier tube. I got, um, I got them both off eBay, but the photomultiplier tube was about 26 bucks. Um, same thing for the scintillator, so, you know. Pretty expensive project considering my uh, TV physics projects is basically free. So, um, for this cosmic ray detector, I have the um, photomultiplier tube hot glued onto the scintillator with a mirror at the end of the scintillator, and I have it hooked up in this fashion right here. So, um, basically, this being your cathode, this being your anode. And um, these being the divider resistors, in my case, they are 270 kilo ohms. Um, they sort of vary a bit based on my uh, database, um, uh, based on the data sheet uh, specifications, but this is in turn it. Now, there's one difference between uh, this and mine, is that mine uses this um, CW multiplier I built and this uh, 230 volt transformer. Um, to provide a um, about 700 volts under the uh, 4.5 mega ohm impedance that this thing is, it gives about 700 volts. Now the issue is that this thing is mains earth referenced, so I can't hook my scope up scope up across this resistor because what happens is when these um, photomultiplier tubes receive a photon, I'll just go over the operation of them a little bit. They receive a photon, it gets focused by the focuser here, and then it hits the dynodes and causes. Um, well, first, actually, it's going to hit, what the photon's going to do is it's going to hit um, a scintillator material, basically, um, that's going to produce an electron, um, and the electron's going to get bounced off the respective dynodes until it hits this um, anode here, and then it's going to generate these electrons. Since electron flow is actually what current is, it's going to generate a, a current, basically, whenever there's a... Um, photon entering the tube, and this current, as you know, if you put a current across the resistance, you get a voltage, that's Ohm's law. So, the, there's going to be a spike whenever um, a pulse, in this case, this pulse is inverted, but there's going to be a pulse across this resistor. So, right there would be your positive and your negative, where you'd hook up your scope. Um, when there's a photon entering the tube, and when there's a photon entering the tube, that means that there's a photon coming from the scintillator, and that in turn means there's a photon... Uh, particle, usually a muon, entering the scintillator. Um, so that's it, except since my supply is mains earth reference, mains earth has to go there, not there, right? Now this provides a bit of a problem. That means I can't just hook my scope up across this resistor. What I'm actually doing is across that resistor, I'm hooking up a little transformer. This transformer is then hooked up to my scope. So I don't know how accurately this is working, but I have tested it and you'll see in just a minute that when I turn the lights on, um, the output goes up significantly, and when I turn them off, it goes down. So that clearly means that I am seeing spikes, and when I put, uh, as you can see later, when I put some little americium uh, 241 from a smoke detector, just a bit of americium here, uh, on top of the box, uh, americium is a weak gamma emitter. Those gammas will go right through the box and hit the scintillator, and the scintillator will detect it. So you can see the um, pulse rate goes up for my multimeter. There. I'm just using my regular um, times 10 divider to... This is basically a um, 90 mega ohm resistor that you put in series with the multimeter, and it um, basically divides the signal by 10. So if uh, my multimeter is saying uh, 70 volts, it's actually 700 volts that I'm um, actually getting in real life. So um, basically, so that's the insides of this thing the way I hooked it up using just a CW multiplier off 230 volts. I'm just using a regular little converter transformer here uh, for US. It's pretty crappy. Um, but um, that's really it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire everything up so you can see it run just in broad daylight. So I'm going to turn on my multimeter, plug in my uh, mains earth reference and my scope and turn on the scope um, and plug in the CW multiplier and now you gotta make sure to not touch anything now that the CW multiplier is plugged in because as you can see on my multimeter 69.7 volts which really translates into 697 volts so here 
Uh, this is the output uh, on the scope from channel one, which is hooked up across that transformer. And now I have it set on uh, normal uh, triggering. So if, there, if it's not triggering, it's not going to um, do anything. As you can see, it's constantly triggering here on pulses. And when I go turn off the lights, I'm gonna turn off the lights right now. As you can see, it's no longer um, triggering on any pulses. There's a pulse briefly every few seconds, and this is what I believe to be cosmic rays. So as you can see uh, right here, there's some cosmic rays, some cosmic rays going on, because every time there's a flash across the screen, something is hitting the scintillator and causing a photon. Now that could be a stray photon from some of the extra light sources in this room, because that box isn't completely light proof, but I do believe that these are photons from the scintillator as they're occurring so infrequently and um, so randomly that if there was a leak in this box, I believe that the light should get in continuously and thus there would be a continuous or at set intervals um, pulses on the scope. But that's not the case. There are random pulses on the scope. And in fact, if I walk right next to the scintillator, uh, usually it does something more because uh, humans are actually weak emitters of um, cosmic rays or sorry, particles. So as you can see, I think these, I believe, are actually uh, muons. Uh, this detector specifically is good at detecting muons. I believe these are muons, uh, which are the result of the decay of pions in the um, upper atmosphere. So what happens is a proton will hit the atmosphere, during it, generate some pions, and then uh, the pions will decay into muons. And since even though these muons only have like a two point something um, microsecond lifetime when they're at rest, because they're moving very fast, um, they are, um, they have a longer lifetime so they can actually make it to my detector throughout the whole atmosphere. Also, if you know your atmosphere facts, it's actually relatively small. So if we uh, turn on our multimeter here, you can see we are still doing um, 698 volts. And that's that. So now I'm going to go turn back on the light so you can actually see the rest of the system and so I can see what I'm doing again. So that's, uh, as you can see, then I turn back on the light and it's triggering. Um, triggering all the time again, okay? So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the americium, this whole time the americium hasn't been on the detector, I'm gonna take the americium and actually just set it on the box right above where the scintillator is, okay? So obviously you don't know any, notice any change in broad daylight, but when I go turn off the lights, you're gonna see that since americium is a very weak gamma emitter, um, these pulses should occur ever so slightly more frequently than um, without it, than without the americium. So I don't know how much more frequently because americium is a very weak gamma emitter, but as you can see, they're, they're happening slightly, ever so slightly more frequently. There's, uh, between the americium and the scintillator, there is uh, maybe two inches of air, a piece of paper, um, a sticker, like, uh, well, you saw it on the box, a white sticker with some Sharpies, and the cardboard itself, so no gamma, par uh, sorry, no alpha particles are getting through to that um, scintillator. It's purely uh, gamma particles and cosmic rays. So some of these you're seeing right now on the screen would be cosmic rays, and some of them would be background radiation, and some of them would be radiation from my smoke detector, americium. Um, and so this isn't a great detector. What For a detector like this, what you really want is two of these detectors stacked on top of each other vertically, because cosmic rays are more than likely to come vertically because they're coming from the upper atmosphere. Um, but um, since I don't have the money, I can't afford it. Um, it'd be better that way, because if you stack them vertically, you would only trigger on the scope uh, when both channels were um, high, because that means a cosmic ray pass through, a particle pass through both scintillators, and that's more than likely that that's a cosmic ray, because what's the chance that a background radiation particle passes through um, both detectors when they're stacked vertically is, is low, so you eliminate some background radiation. Some of this is going to be background radiation that you're seeing on the screen now. Um, and I'm going to remove the americium at the uh, moment, and you're going to see that it's going to decrease because there's less of a source of radiation. Um, obviously, I'd, if you want to actually count uh, for a specific time, uh, be my guest. I may post that in the description or over the video right now. Um, but I, I think the chance that background radiation is entering that box is low because obviously all alpha particles are blocked. Um, there's going to be no sources of radiation inside the box unless the photomultiplier tube itself is radioactive. 
I'm going to have a whole house above me protecting from any, or, and below me as well, protecting from any um, natural radiation. So the only radiation is going to be the wheat gammas coming from the uh, americium, which is now below the table. So it has a lot of air and table between it and the box uh, with the scintillator in it. And um, there's a whole house. And so the only thing that could actually be background radiation here is anything that's in this room right here which is basically limited to me and smoke detectors and I don't know what's going on now at all I really have no clue um, maybe we turn up the sensitivity a bit uh, so obviously now since the sensitivity was turned up uh, you're gonna get a lot fewer results I don't I, I honestly have no uh, idea what happened there why it suddenly went crazy and now nothing happens if I turn it down again you see if I adjust the triggering on the scope I can trigger the results now by the way will not be consistent with the results back because the sensitivity is um, changed so you can really only compare results um, for the same sensitivity but the thing is that now my sensitivity is lower I'm going to detect much lower energy particles basically is what I'm detecting um, and probably a lot more background light so what I'm going to want to do is turn this knob up just ever so slightly. Now, obviously, some of the, what it's detecting could be background light, which is true. There is a uh, light-up clock right there that could be providing some of the background light, but I'm pretty sure that this is cosmic rays. As you can see, the CW multiplier still at um, 700 volts-ish, which is about the um, minimum the photomultiplier tube work at it has about a uh, few, maybe a hundred thousand or so amplification um, at 700 volts. It really should be operated close to a kilovolt, but my CW multiplier gets loaded down. Um, so I think you've seen enough of this uh, cosmic ray detecting. Um, it's pretty boring to actually watch. Um, but my ultimate plan, if you're wondering, obviously now the lights are back on, so it's going to trigger a lot. Uh, but if you're wondering what my ultimate plan with this detector is, is not just to detect cosmic rays, um, with this whole, I mean, it's, it's a mess with this whole setup here. Um, it's not to just detect cosmic rays, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan to see uh, if cosmic rays have any effect on my weather. So um, what I'm going to, what I plan to do is get this connected to some sort of um, data logger. I'm probably going to get a GPS um, time sync connect it to an SD card, data log the cosmic rays, but as well as data logging the cosmic rays, data log the temperature, um, use a barometer to get um, a pressure, as I, what I think barometers measure. Um, and what I'm going to do is in my gutter, I'm going to stick a water sensor. So that means that every time it rains um, enough so that water gets in my gutter and flows down, um, it's going to data log that as well, but it's not going to continue to sense water after it stopped raining because gutters water flows through them and doesn't pool up so that way i believe i can sense weather and uh, give a, a gps time um, stamp and sense weather fairly easily uh, using one of these and some temp and some sensors and then i can correlate as to whether cosmic rays more cosmic rays do indeed mean more weather um, so who knows my hypothesis is that yes they do but um, it's too small to measure so it doesn't have much of an effect it wouldn't af it wouldn't affect weather enough to be measurable by my wimpy little setup here perhaps if you filled this whole room with these and if you had coincidence detectors which is what the two detectors stacked vertically on top of each other would be it would be a bit more um, exciting but I'll leave you with some images of my um, setup here here's the cosmic rays we have the power supply here the signal here the uh, little transformer I'm using there, this is just like a, from an audio transformer or something. Here is my um, uh, divide by 10 for my multimeter. The multimeter the scope is my mains ground connection right there. Um, and that's the 110 to 240 volt transformer. So um, let me know what you think. This is how I actually connected the photomultiplier tube. And I literally glued the photomultiplier tube onto the scintillator. Um, and this whole thing cost me about 50 bucks because I made this myself, made this myself. I already had the multimeter, already had the scope, and already had the high voltage capacitors. I salvaged those from a TV circuit board. So uh, you're going to want to filter your output. Um, but yeah, that's, 
that's really all I can think of for this cosmic ray experiment. So what remains to be done is get some op amps and amplify the signal, probably get a times 10 amplifier, because my scope was set to about 5 millivolts per division, so 50, mil, 50 millivolts, that's a workable signal. Uh, maybe I'll go times uh, 50 or times 100 for my amp, uh, times 100 would give me half a volt, uh, but uh, times 50 is probably fine, um, a quarter volt. So I may go at times 50 or times 20 or times 10. And then after that, I'm going to need to just as adjusting the trigger level on the scope, adjust the sensitivity. I'm going to get a, um, an op amp hooked up as a comparator and get some, uh, basically make a voltage divider and tweak the comparator level, just like I can tweak the trigger level on my scope to get a sensitivity level, basically to sense cosmic rays. I'm going to uh, set the potentiometer to the way I like it. I'm going to hot glue the potentiometer shut. It's going to be a trimmer pot. Um, so, so that throughout this whole experiment, which will probably last a year or so, um, that the uh, pot doesn't move or get dust in it or anything like that and change its value. Um, and then after that, that output is probably going to go uh, um, wireless uh, using some sort of system up to my room where out the window there's going to be the sensors on the gutter, the temperature sensor, the barometer sensor, um, and the water sensor in the gutter. And um, then there's also, um, and then there's going to be the, uh, an SD card. I'm probably going to get myself an 8 gigabyte SD card um, and a GPS. The GPS is just going to timestamp. And, um, you know, I'm going to log basically the value from every temperature every millisecond or maybe every 10 milliseconds uh, with the GPS timestamp onto the SD card so that I can later graph it on my computer. Uh, just by plugging the SD card in, I might do make, make a CSV file or something like that, and then um, I can view my results. So, thanks for watching, and again, I don't know how much um, this transformer is actually working, but it does appear that the amount of light entering this box does indeed have a correlation between what we were seeing on the scope. I cannot tell you if what we were seeing on the scope was, there's definitely got to be some cosmic rays, but it's not... But I don't know how many of those flashes on the screen were cosmic rays, how many were background radiation, how many were background light. Um, I still have to put this, I'm going to put this in the place where I uh, used to have my TVs, um, which is much darker than a lit up room with, uh, with windows. So, yep, that's what remains to be done. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you are, and I hope you learned something. So thanks for watching.